Here we have a quick mini review on a Pros Kit SS969 Hot Air SMD rework station. I saw this on Deal Extreme. I was looking for an inexpensive one. I don't do a lot of uh, SMD work, but I thought I should have a little hot air gun like this. And I saw that for uh, what I thought was a reasonable price and with shipping uh, to Chile included. Hard to get things in Chile uh, for, for reasonable prices sometimes. And uh, I was a little skeptical, but I pushed the button anyways to buy it because Pro's kit is not exactly associated with the highest quality. Actually, anything with the word pro in it usually indicates that it's the exact opposite in quality, that it's the lowest piece of junk that you should buy and expect it to break the second you turn it on. But I've been pleasantly surprised with this. So let's have a look at it. Uh, we will turn it on here. And you can see that it was originally set for 450 degrees set point. Uh, you can adjust the temperature here. Right now it's at the highest. We can set it higher or lower here. Let's set it for around 250, just so you can see when I start this up what it looks like. We have a fan speed control here. We'll put it on minimum, or not minimum, let's put it on medium. And let's take the wand or the heat gun out of the out of the holder and you will see that the temperature is rising very quickly it gets the temperature very quickly and I can confirm yes that it does there does get there almost as fast at the a hot air stream using my thermocouples on my digital multimeters and uh, based on what I can measure depending on how you hold the thermocouple in the airstream it does get to uh, within 5 or 10 degrees of the temperature you set. That's not great, but depending on how far you hold the heat gun away from something, you'll get a different temperature anyway. So we put this back in the holder, and you see that, yes, the magnetic switch inside the heat gun shuts down the heater, and then it starts to cool down, and once it hits 100 degrees, it will turn itself off uh, the display that is and then it will turn the fan off after it gets a little bit lower in temperature. I don't know exactly what that temperature is. So this uh, hot air rework, rework station consumes something like 700 watts according to the manual. It's adjustable from 100 to 450 degrees C and it puts out something like 120 liters per minute maximum. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't have a way to measure that the uh, it weighs around one and a half kilos so it's not too heavy and actually it's a little bit too light sometimes uh, you have to uh, if you try to push the button here to turn it on and off you see it moves around actually it's a little bit too light for my liking at least the base is the handle is nice and light which it should be you can also buy replacement heat guns for this and replacement nozzles i don't see why anybody would need to replace the nozzles but unless you're really rough with things it comes with three different size nozzles to go on the end and of course oops, I don't want to heat it up again because I'm going to be taking it apart so let's turn it off and you can see the uh, the nozzle without the additional nozzles put on on it this this would be good for heat shrink those kinds of things of course the small ones would be too uh, now these white dots that you see on here well I put those on there because it just came with black markings on it and anything that has any kind of indicator that I can put some paint on to make it easier to see I, I always do that uh, so uh, let's turn it back on again though so you can see how fast this thing heats up because it does heat up very rapidly so let's set it to 450 degrees the maximum obviously I didn't let it cool down enough you should always let it cool down before you turn it off let it get to this state before you turn it off let's take the wand out of the holder and there we are you can see the little light flickering here this indicates the uh, the PCM or the pulse width modulation I should say PWM uh, on the heater going out to indicate how much power it's putting in if I turn this down or turn the uh, turn the fan right up it gets quite noisy as you can hear you can see that changing duty cycle I'll turn it down it, it flashes differently put it back to medium flow here let's turn the temperature way down and you can see that light change completely there we go oh 
here we go. Now, sometimes, I don't know why this comes up with this error when you try to cool things down too quickly. And the only way to get out of it is to turn it off and turn it back on. I've, I've seen this once or twice now. I didn't think it was a common problem. And so there must be some little bug with the set, the uh, set point inside the CPU. If you change things too rapidly, rapidly it can't keep up, I guess. I don't know. There's, there's one little bug for this thing. Other than that, I've had no other concerns with this. And yes, there's a little cover here over a hole. There's a trim pot inside. You can get inside there and readjust the calibration for the temperature on the output. I played with it and it was basically within spec when I got it, but I played with it to see how much you could change it. And it works pretty good. You can adjust it to whatever you want within, I think, something like 80 degrees, plus or minus 80 degrees on what it reads on the output. So we'll wait for this to cool down and then we will take it apart and see what it looks like inside. So now that it has cooled down enough to handle, let's turn off the power here. We'll disconnect the wand. We will look inside the heat gun or the wand later on in a moment. Put that aside. Let's unplug the main unit. Let's, let's have a look inside at the quality of it. Now, I was, like I said, I was pleasantly surprised the the case itself is made out of plastic so these screws here go into plastic but they're reasonable quality self tappers I've had this apart four or five times now looking at things and I've been pleasantly surprised at the quality you will see why in a moment uh, another nice feature this one has some of the inexpensive equipment that you buy from China other places have fuses inside that you have to take everything apart. So if you don't want to take this apart though, it does have one of these fuses built into the connector here. Uh, cheap little glass fuse, probably uh, will save the equipment and easy to replace. I'll take out the other screws here. They're a little stiff to come out because like I said, they're into plastic. It'd be nice if they had metal inserts here with proper metal threads, but I don't think anybody's going to be taking this apart enough to worry about. So this bezel is what holds everything together on the back. You can see here the bezel holds this metal plate on here. And this metal plate has the, the connector on the back. You can see the wires here are soldered in here nicely and then heat shrunk with uh, with some nice little bit of heat shrink here to cover things up, just like it should be. You can see inside here that the transformer is mounted on the bottom, and it has a little bit of glue on the nuts to keep it from coming loose and bouncing around. That's a nice little, nice little uh, construction feature. Let's open up the front part, and you can see the quality of the circuit board inside here with the controls on it. Maybe, maybe we'll have a look at what CPU is on here too. It says it's CPU controlled. I can't imagine it's anything too complicated. It's just a temperature controller with some logic built into it. I know watching people take screws out is like watching paint dry. Luckily, there's only four. There are only four on each side. So here we take this off. And you can see inside here the construction of the board. Let's hold this up here, see if we can get a better shot of it. The wires aren't exactly the longest, but it doesn't matter. You can see the construction of the board is actually quite nice. I believe, yeah, it's, it appears to be double-sided load. Uh, soldering quality is all very nice. All the connectors here have glue on them to keep them from popping out. And we have some cheap little electrolytics here. I can't see what they are as far as temperature rating go or manufacturer. This one here is rated for, oh, I can't see. It's buried in there. Not important. I'm not too concerned if this thing really breaks badly. I have, it's, it, well, it's obvious that you can repair it, you can get to all the parts here, but some of these parts might be hard to find. 
and I can't see what that CPU is, but I'll put an annotation in later when I see what it is. But overall, the construction quality here, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I can't see any reason to complain. Oh yes, uh, you will notice here that the ground comes through all the way through to the front of the unit, connects to this post here, which uh, is connected to the front plate, so the front plate is properly grounded. And then also this yellow wire here goes from the ground to the wand and yes the wand is correctly wired so that you don't have a hot wire going to the shield or the ground like has happened on some other manufacturers so let's put that aside and let's look at the wand this is the connector on the end has a nice it's fairly well strain relieved the cable is fairly good quality I'm happy with that it's rated at uh, 80 degrees C, 300 volts. So don't point your don't point your hot air gun at your cable. That should have really been a little bit higher rated because I can tell you that everybody at some point using a hot air gun or an, a soldering iron will bump their wire with the with the uh, soldering gun and melt things. So that should have been a little bit higher rated, but oh well. It's a nice flexible cable. It's easy to manage. So let's take the wand apart here. So this comes off here, this threaded part. This is one of these types of plastic that can take high heat because this is right by the, uh, the heater element here. We have a couple of screws here in the handle. Take that apart, self-tappers again. I've had these out four or five times and still no indication that they might be starting to fail on the threads like you have to worry about sometimes. Take the... Uh, cover off here we have the fan the fan has a little rubber air duct that uh, sits in a groove here so the fan comes out so you, know, you could replace the fan I guess if you could find a replacement circuit board down in here with the uh, looks like thermocouple input the uh, reed switch for the handle to shut it off when it's put in the handle and I'm not sure what that symbol is supposed to mean there but it's an E with a line through it I could look that up later and then the heating element connections here. I'm not going to take the uh, the heating element out of the wand because, well, there's some glue here holding the thermal couple in place, and this is all kind of heat shrunk together here in a very, I would say, a little bit of a fragile way. So, if you need to repair it, yes, you can get at things, but I don't feel like taking that apart. It might be a little bit difficult to get back together in a nice fashion. So let's put this back together and well i'll put it back together later but there you have it a uh, a nice little hot air gun safely built i believe um to me it's oh by the way this is a nice light feeling wand too by the way um nicely built good construction i don't see anything really to not recommend this i'm sure that there are higher quality hot air guns around but for the price 86 dollars shipped anywhere in the world I don't think you can really beat this one. It's a nice, nice little hot air gun.